Well, hello everyone and welcome to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world show made for the fans by a fan. I am your host as always, Richard Tiemann, and this is the award-winning fan show. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is... It is a beautiful day. And I mean that literally. I, it got above 40 today in Sioux Falls. And I know that I've been here long enough when it gets above 40 for the first time since I've been here. And you just want to go out and you want to celebrate and you want to run around in, in a light long sleeve. Not like the full hoodie, you know, not a pullover, but like a zip up, right? <sighs> That's what it felt like today. Yep, everyone is a fan of something, and we've got something for every fan, even if you're a fan of the weather, which is some of the best uh, and most cliche small talk. But it was a beautiful day. It is Friday. Happy start to your weekend, Fan Nation. I know it's going to be a good one. And why? Because we are continuing the countdown to IFL kickoff. We have week three of the XFL coming up. And we've just got a lot of stuff to talk about. Today, though, before we get to headlines, before we do our thing, I did want to say that, you know, we postponed Thursday's episode to come to you tonight, Friday, because today is a very special day in the history of Fan Show. For those of you that know, um, it was on this day, 2016, that I did my first post game player and coach interviews um and it was something that <laughs> i was i was literally not prepared for and i don't mean that in a way that i hadn't ever done them before and so i didn't know what i was doing it was that um mrs fanshow danja and myself we went to the season opener for the spokane empire it was against the tri-city fever and we went down there fully expecting to be fans, right? We had seats, we were in the stands amongst the ninth man and everybody else that was there for the empire. And we were just, we expected to be spectators. It was the full expectation of going down there. We were just going to sit and hang out. We were going to hope that they win and they did. And it was a great time. And so then the clock hits zero and uh wow uh we're off we are up and running i go down to the field the players came up into the stands and all of a sudden the gm of the empire says hey you who do you want to talk to and i'm like huh <laughs> deer in the headlights and i said how about the quarterback who i did not know what dowdell's last name was at all i didn't i didn't owe anybody really at, at all and uh and i said how about one of the coaches, and that was Amir Ishmael. So I did my post-game interview with Charles Dowdell, whose last name I mispronounced despite asking him twice. I thought it was Val Vell or something. <laughs> and and then uh, Amir, who was a, a really fun interview. And I still, I believe I still have the audio for those two. But anyway, that is what today is. Uh, we begin today officially my fifth year of IFL coverage one two three four here we go number five and I'm, I'm very excited for it. I don't know what the tour is going to end up being like I don't and I don't know what uh, how many games I'll get to that aren't storm games or, or whatnot and I'll explain why in a little bit but I uh, obviously I want it to still be just as good a coverage as you have come to expect from the fan show top 10 plays of the week interviews exclusives all that good stuff so what better way to do this one than by having our special guest be the new commissioner of the ifl who's been a commissioner about as long as i've been director of communications for the sioux falls storm so uh let's go ahead and welcome uh adam i see john i see matt i see chris you guys have all joined good to see you guys it is the start of my fifth year of IFL coverage today. And I know that you're thinking, well, 
you were technically covering or following the Spokane Empire your first year. I was, but I got so enthralled with the league as a whole. Like I, I talked about all the teams. I did, and of course, I talked a little trash about them. Obviously, if they played Spokane, but no, I did cover uh, the league. It just was more exclusively tailored to Spokane and the Spokane Empire. So here we are. Four years later, five years since the start of the fan show, which, as you'll see here in a minute, was not called the fan show always. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to this thing that we call the headlines, and uh, I'll go over everything for you guys uh, today because it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't you worry. So here we are, today's headlines. <laughs> Of course, headlines are brought to you by Dynamite Enterprises. They want to customize your world, and they can do that in a number of ways. They can do awesome t-shirts. That's right. They did this t-shirt. I can finally say that this is a product of Dynamite Enterprises. They can do hats, beanies, polos, jackets, hoodies for any weather, any occasion. They can do trophies, plaques, awards, medals, banners, tablecloths, all that good stuff. I'll get into like an Eminem style rhyme one of these days with all the things that Dynamite Enterprises can do. But the point is, is that if you need something for marketing, promotional, personal, or otherwise, please hit up Dynamite Enterprises. Check out their Instagram, Dynamite Enterprises, or if you know what you want or you have a question about what it would take to get what you want done, then email Ethan at DynamiteEnterprises.com. So uh, today, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it right now before I share it with you guys, but here it is. That's me, 2016, with Amir Ishmael. And as you see, there is a, a hat, a hoodie, and a white t-shirt that says The Butt Fumble Show. That is what the show was originally called. Uh, the podcast, when I started, was not meant to be anything more than a hobby, something to pass the time, to keep me busy, to work. Uh, you know, I was going to business school uh, at the community college in Spokane, Spokane Falls Community College, working on my AA in small business because I wanted to open a sports bar uh, and do karaoke on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. So we did the podcast, and uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, there's a lot of history. There is. There's a lot of history, too the fan show and uh obviously the butt fumble show is part of that history i i don't know if i have any more of those shirts out there but on the back it says i'm no expert because that was kind of my my thing um because what i wanted to do with the show butt fumbler fan was i wanted to give you guys fan nation something different something uh to break up what you were used to which is experts and analysts telling you how it is giving you why this is the case and how if you think otherwise you're wrong i've been wrong okay i have been very wrong at times i've gone all in on things like the aaf we all know how that ended i've been a believer that this thing was going to happen or that this person was this and i've been wrong and i will own up to when i am wrong these guys don't the cow herds the baylisses the stephen a smiths out there they will tell you how it is and why this is going to be without leaving any room for doubt. And then when they're wrong, which is a lot, they don't own up to it at all. They give you an excuse as to why they're wrong. So look, we're wrong here on the fan show from time to time. But I wanted to be different. I wanted to give you guys something different. And hopefully in five over five years, I've done that. I hope that I really have given you guys something different other than just being a host of a podcast that you maybe know on a more personal level. I mean, what, whatever the case may be, I hope that I have provided you guys with great coverage, be it NFL, IFL, uh, the year that we really got into the NAL, and, of course, BattleBots, uh, Comic-Cons, uh, music events, just really anything and everything, wrestling events. I hope that I have given you guys something different. And so uh, as we continue to celebrate five years of the fan show – and begin our fifth year of IFL coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Fan Nation, for all that you guys do, uh, which is just as, as simple as listening. Listen, laugh, maybe you love it, like, and share. That's, that's all that we ask for here on the Fan Show. So that is a very young me and a still very big and buff Amir Ishmael right after the Spokane Empire defeated the Tri-City Fever 
and we did our post game interview. Still one of the funniest interviews ever, just because Amir gets so intense, he gets so into things. Um, but yes, that was a lot of fun. That was a great night, and it was because of this photo right here that I knew I could never look like that again. <laughs> so, if we would have waited a week for the home opener uh, to do the interviews, I would have been, uh, I don't know, maybe if this wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have donned the suit, but obviously the suit has been me. Uh, it has represented my brand and it's been a staple now of me in my indoor football and just coverage in general. It doesn't matter what event I go to. Now I usually can sometimes dress down and do a, a t-shirt and, and just a sport jacket, but I suit up for more occasions than not. And it was because of this photo was taken. <laughs> <laughs> t-shirt zip up hoodie and a hat and i'm down trying to do player interviews and i was like never again so the next week for the home opener i was in a silver suit the jacket and the pants i had a black button up and a bright orange tie i wanted to look the part so <laughs> say again Thank you, Fan Nation, for not judging me too harshly. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It really has. Uh, Matt says, 40? We got 34 today. Yeah, I think it just clipped 40 today. But I was ready to go and uh, be in a, a T-shirt walking from the office to the car. I don't know beyond that, like how long I would have stayed in the T-shirt. But it got close. Uh, let's see. Adam says, so are you going to wear the suit at the racetrack? Absolutely, I will. My first United Bowl... Oddly enough, which was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, I was in that same red or that same orange and black suit. And I sweated my ass off. Oh, my God, did I sweat so bad. But yes, this photo right here is the moment I said I can never look like that again if I'm going to be taken seriously. Uh, whether the show was called Butt Fumble Show or not, it was this moment. This photograph right here that I said, it's a suit or nothing. <laughs> so me and the missus, we went and looked for suits and we suited me up for that next game. I'll share that photo too when it gets to the time. But yeah, today is uh, the start of five years of IFL coverage. And we are, of course, celebrating the fifth year of the fan show, which its birthday was September 10th of 2019 so all the way up until september 10th of uh, 2020 this is, we're in the fifth year of the fan show and uh, it's been quite a journey it's been a great ride and you guys have been so fantastic so uh, again thank you guys so very much for everything um, we have the ifl commissioner todd tryon on the program it'll be his second time on the show as the commissioner of course we talked to him the day that it was announced that he would be the new commissioner for the IFL, which was about two and a half weeks after I already knew, because <laughs> that's, how, that's how the world of indoor football works. Um, I did have Mike Allshouse on when he was commissioner a couple of times. So, uh, you know, this is how I wanted to do today's episode, because it's a special occasion. It's a special day. Um, also, with the fifth year of the fan show and IFL coverage, I did want to announce that um, I am creating, along with the Kickers Need Love 2 movement, the Fan Show Hall of Fame. And I do have uh, inductees already in mind for this first class, the class of 2020. So we will be doing, uh, we will be introducing the uh, official, the Fan Show official, Fan Show Hall of Fame. And I believe right now I have, uh, for year five, we will induct five into the Fan Show Hall of Fame. Beyond that, it'll probably be three a year, kind of like what the IFL does. But, you know, um, I was thinking about, so what's the criteria for a Hall of Fame? And really, since this is my Hall of Fame, it, the criteria can be whatever I want it to be. But there will be a criteria. It will make sense. These choices will be great choices for the first ever inductees into the Fan Show Hall of Fame. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, more will be revealed, obviously, once the IFL season actually starts and then as the season goes on. So we've got a lot of things uh, in mind, a lot of great things planned for you, the people of Fan Nation, as we uh, get ready for our fifth year of IFL coverage, which will be one of the best years of our IFL coverage. Even if I don't get out to as many games as I hoped, the coverage is still going to be just as good, if not better, and hopefully it's better. And that brings us to the next portion of our program, which is the uh, top story 
today, and that uh, I think goes without saying that it is the uh, new look IFL. That's right, IFL has a new logo. We got a preview of these probably about a month ago, right? There were some images of them floating around. There's this logo and another logo. The other logo I like a lot more. This one, it's growing on me. I know that people hate change, so whether or not you think it's a good logo or not may not even be why you hate it or you love it. But this is, this is the new look, okay? A plain and simple. This is how we're going to go into the 2020 season. And I think... Obviously, it marks the official start of a new chapter of the league, not just a new season, but this is, you know, where do we go from here as the IFL? Uh, Mr. Tryon and myself, we talk a little bit about that, what the mission and sort of the vision is for the league for 2020 and beyond. But this is the new look. They Whoever is running social media for the league must have just got access yesterday because the cover photo the profile pic everything got updated and they started putting out some content and my oh my seven months later and the comment section is still just as good i don't know if that's funny or sad at this point i really don't um simply because a lot of it is the same a lot of it is the same person who is banging his drum until his hands are bleeding and they have calluses um, it just that comment. You can make a t-shirt out of it. You mean the refs? No, no, no one means the refs. Absolutely. No one means the refs anymore. Seven months later and you just got to get over it. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what else to say at this point that if you're still hung up on the outcome of a championship game, seven months later, I, I just, I'm so baffled that somebody can cling to something like that. The 49ers lost the Super Bowl like a month ago. I'm already over it. Like, you know, better luck next season. This is the IFL championship game, a championship that your team has won before more than once, more than twice, even one, a few of them. And yet there are people that cannot let that game go just like i really like, oh, you laugh till it hurts because at this point it really does you mean the refs no no one means the refs anymore <laughs> lorenzo brown 200 yards i think like 15 to 18 passing five passing touchdowns one rushing no interceptions <laughs> referee didn't do that okay I, I just, mm. Matt says, uh, salty and ticky tack. Absolutely. Now look, I don't mean to come off as taking shots or throwing shade at the Arizona Rattlers as a team, their players, their staff, their coaches. It's that this is when you see a post could be any post, right? That just even mentions the Sioux Falls storm or the 2019 United Bowl, and it's like, unleash the floodgates. Uh, <laughs> and some people have even gone so far as to say that I'm a homer. I moved to Sioux Falls less than three months ago, man. Like, <laughs> I had no dog in that fight at the time. Like, I was still hoping that Spokane was going to get a team and that that might be where I end up. Spokane got a team, but that's not where I ended up. So <laughs> it's just... Uh, it's, I feel like I could, but I won't. I'm not going to speak for every fan of the other 12 teams in the league, but I'm going to say that the vibe I'm getting is pretty damn close to get the hell over it. I mean, you've got Quad City fans, Spokane fans who haven't even had a team for two years telling you in the comments to let it the F go. Um, so... <laughs> I'll say it louder for the people in the back of the room. Seven months is a month too long. You get six, maybe to, to whine about something beyond that. Like you got to get over it. So I'm sorry. That's my little soapbox. That's my little rant. And again, there's very few of them. There are very, very few of them that are still banging this drum. 
I just thought it was interesting because you go to the comments section and, and without fail, without fail, there they are. The same, the, the usual suspects and the, the same comments each time. So I'm, I'm over it. Uh, Adam says it's Arizona. They have nothing better to do down there, uh, but complain because the rest of their team suck. You know, I look, it, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I, I'm all for a passionate fan base. I just don't think that this is that anymore. I really don't. Um, but I, I know that their players are good guys. Their coaching staff, one of the best in the league. The franchise was last year's franchise of the year there. You can't, Take away that Arizona is a great IFL acquisition, right? Since they joined, they have done great things for the league as far as the draw, the competition, um, and just helping the league look and feel like one of the best out there, even before the AFL folded. But it's just a handful of rotten apples, plain and simple. Um, so, you know. I just wanted to get that out there because it's not it's not just this fan base versus this fan base. It's like you have this fan base and then every other fan base is like, hey, like, can we move on? Like, we've got new new football coming up. Um, <laughs> Darren says, what's up? What's up? How are things with you, Terrence? Good to see you. Um, so the new look IFL, there's your logo. Uh, I think it, clearly people are going to be upset because the the eagle was unique, right? I liked the eagle. I really did. This will take some getting used to, just like with anything, but it's not like, you know, I don't feel like if you go back to the Eagle, it's a, a live or die kind of thing. This is the direction that the IFL is heading, which is giving them a more marketable look. It's giving them uh, more, I guess, credibility, if that's the right word I'm looking for here. But nonetheless, uh, it, we all knew that change was coming especially when you get a new commissioner, when you're trying to grow the league and expand, and then especially when the AFL folded. Like, you had to have known change was coming. Uh, there's new rules. There's the deuce now. Um, the last minute of each half, the kicker can attempt on the ensuing kickoff a free kick, and if it goes through the uprights, you get two points. And if it doesn't, the ball is placed at the 25. Um that is crazy to me, but it's only for the last minute. Now, I would have preferred all or nothing, but I think momentum-wise, this definitely changes things. If you're down by 10 with a minute left in the half, you can erase that deficit just like that. I do think it makes for a very interesting aspect of the game. Uh, Mr. Tryon and myself discussed that. Um, there's a few things rules wise that he also brings up as far as defensive pass interference. Um, but really just the future looks bright for the IFL. So I get it. You know, if you're not a fan of the logo, if you're not a fan of the deuce rule, if you're not a fan of 13 teams in the league, I get it. I really do. But, uh, the point is, is that this is, is the direction the league is going to go. And I think positivity and encouragement will go a long way. I really do. Um, Terrence says Rattlers fan here. That championship game is in my rear view, focused on 2020. Very excited about the new teams and the new rules. Go Terrence. That is what dude, I'm going to give you applause right now because that I love that about you. That's why I get happy when you're in my comments section here, because you you get it, man. And I understand that losing championships sucks and that there's always a finger to point somewhere, or at least it feels like. But I love that you are putting it behind you and that you're focused on a new, exciting 2020 season that we're going to kick off in just 15 days. So good for you, Terrence. I like you. Um, as far as the rest of the IFL is concerned, Mr. Tryon and myself discussed that, you know, it, it's going to be kind of a downer that not all the teams in the league will be competing on the same weekend with 13 teams. You just can't do it, but it does kind of give you a nice break because what that allows you to do is to check out teams and matchups that maybe you wouldn't have been able to because your game was on at the same time as theirs. And I, I know that realistically the, <laughs> there were a lot of games that were not played on the same day at the same time because of arena availability and scheduling conflicts and whatnot. But, you know, work with me here. I think it's a great thing that you don't have to worry about 
uh, missing more football than you want. As somebody who creates top 10 highlights, I'm very for this because I know that I will always have a chance to uh, make as many highlights as I want and not have to worry about if I missed any. The decision for who makes the top 10 and who doesn't won't be quite as hard. I, I did kind of look forward to the challenge of maybe there being 14 teams. So you have you know seven matchups and trying to figure out which plays from those would make the top 10. It, it's going to be very fun for me uh, with the league being plus four now. So watch for those. Uh, also, we have the XFL. Uh, real quick, though, the Super Bowl of all things rock and roll number 10 is happening now we're in round two now normally we blaze through this thing in a week we start monday the week of the super bowl and we go through all 64 bands so 32 matchups that first day it's chaos but we usually release matchups you know throughout the day uh so you have like eight here and eight here and eight here or whatever and then day two is usually a lot calmer because you just eliminated half of your bracket and then day three four five and then eventually six is your championship we because the death of kobe bryant and we decided to postpone the super bowl of all things rock and roll we've been able to take it a little slower give more attention to each division to each part of the bracket and the matchups so round two um, we're halfway through round two right now and we will be publishing on twitter at fan show official the alternative rock matchups for round two and then tomorrow the uh, pop punk um, matchups for round two and then round three will be all of them um, and then round two or uh, round four will be all of them again so uh, we'll get this thing wrapped up here in a little bit but it's been a lot of fun um, i've gotten some great feedback on it there's people that don't even realize um you know what uh, what it is that's going on until they see it and they're like oh that's a really cool idea yeah 64 bands <laughs> from different genres rock bands only one winner uh will queen three peat this year we'll see terrence says do you know what city is locked in to join the ifl next year other than columbus i do not i do know that there are some markets that have been talked about as special interest markets uh ones that uh i think are you know Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And then others that are like, really? Like somebody mentioned Hawaii. I was like, don't do that. Don't be that guy. Uh, but Seattle and Portland, I think, were mentioned uh, Toledo. But those, like I said, we're in the 2020 now. Anything that happens next year, we probably won't know officially until uh, leading up to the United Bowl. So right now it's just kind of speculation at best, the rumor mill doing its uh, its thing each year. Hello, Ty. Hello, Kaylee. Hello, Dexter. Dexter. <laughs> Good to see you guys. And uh, also, we have uh, XFL matchups for week three this weekend. And uh, those ones I wanted to go over with you guys because I went 4-0 and last week. 4-0. and And I was very, very excited that I was able to predict that. I'll probably go 0-4 this week, but hear me out here. So for week three, we have on Saturday, Houston visiting Tampa Bay. 2-0 versus an 0-2. Now, I'm all for an upset. I don't see this game being that upset. Tampa struggles in more than just one category. It's not their offense stalling in the red zone. It's not their special teams being able to set them up in good field position or not. And it's not necessarily their defense being able to stop the other team or create turnovers. Um, there's just a lot happening with that team. And I think it's going to take probably another beating for them to finally figure out and have that aha moment. And then we might start to see them compete and even get a win next week. Now, I don't know who their opponent is next week offhand, but Houston, in my mind, is the team to beat right now in the XFL. And I don't see this as being a, a trap game three weeks in. I just don't. I think Houston is going to continue to do what Houston does, and that's play dominant football in all phases because you match up a team that's doing well in all phases and a team that's not in all phases. It can get a little ugly. So I don't know if it'll be a blowout, but I do think Houston gets this one on the road, stays undefeated. And then uh, you have the Dallas Renegades in Seattle. Seattle's going to bring another big ruckus crowd. Um, and that, I think, will go to Seattle because of their hometown, their home team factor, their home field advantage. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun uh, to watch this game. I think it'll be a close one. But I do think Seattle ultimately gets the win on this one. Uh, I'm not sure where I would say 
Dallas is as a team right now. Are they good? Are they bad? They're one and one. So they're doing some things right, some things wrong. Seattle clearly has grown a lot from week one to week two. And even if it was against Tampa Bay that they got their win, it's that they didn't let those early mistakes dictate the outcome of the end of the game. And I think that speaks a lot for Jim Zorn and company. So I think Seattle gets that one. Then Sunday, New York, one and one against St. Louis, one and one. This one's a tougher one to call. I'd like to see St. Louis get another win um, just because I think that maybe last week was one of those fluke games. But, you know, three weeks in, and what's really a fluke at this point? New York will be a tough opponent. But I think St. Louis ultimately gets the win in this one. I, I couldn't tell you why exactly other than they're the home team. And I think that they have some wrongs they need to right. So I'm going to go with St. Louis in that one. And then finally you have DC, another undefeated team, as the road opponent in LA. Uh, again, I, I love a good upset. I really do. Again, week three, don't see that being the case here. Uh, LA could surprise some people, but DC, they're defense has been so good and i said that last week they got the win last week so i say you're undefeated stay undefeated even though they're on the road and then st louis and seattle get another one in the win column and move past 500 so those are my xfl week three predictions your thoughts on xfl week three adam says hawaii is a bad idea <laughs> no shot <laughs> there it's like Alaska back in 09. Not a good idea. Anything outside the continental U.S. right now for the IFL is a bad idea. Okay. Uh, Terrence says he agrees with Adam. Travel costs would be crazy. Uh, and go Houston. Yeah, Houston looks sharp. Good choice, Terrence. Uh, Adam says they benched the Instagram model. That's a good start. <laughs> I, I do love what the XFL is doing. In fact, uh, in my interview with Mr. Tryon, we pay respect to the XFL and what they've been able to do in just two short weeks. So I think there's a lot that can be taken away. I don't think the NFL, um, there's too much pride for them to literally take things away from that league. They're going to keep doing what the, uh, what, the ex, what the NFL does. The NFL is going to do what the NFL does. Antonio Brown is in the news again. <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, it's pretty funny. Uh, so go and check that out. I don't want to get too far down that rabbit hole right now. I'm trying to think if there's anything um, other than BattleBots tickets are on sale right now. Season 5 has been officially confirmed, which I think is weird that they announced tickets were on sale and then Discovery finally announced that there was Season 5. But it is what it is. I'm just happy that my friends um, for BattleBots get a chance to go and compete again and do what they love. Uh, Discovery has been so good to them. So it's great to have them be able to go and uh, and compete each year. So we are at the 33-minute mark. I've got a 15-minute interview with Todd Tryon. So unless anybody has any last comments or questions, answers here, um, I do appreciate you guys for joining me. Uh, for those of you listening, not knowing who I'm talking to uh, and on the podcast, we are live. Uh, we stream it first on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash fanshowofficial before it gets posted in podcast form. And so if you haven't liked the fan show on Facebook yet, do so so that you can be here, so that you can hear it before everybody else does. Uh, so thank you guys again. Uh, Terrence says, what will your uh, all option on the kickoff and 1.2.3 point conversion? So I like both. I, I think the kickoff idea is something that should have been happening at the NFL level like decades ago. Um, I, I, and I really mean that. It's safe, it's smart, and it's still entertaining. It still keeps that part of the game important. Um, the one, two, and three point, I, I'd like a kick to still be worth something because the kickers, other than kickoff and an actual field goal attempt, really aren't doing much. I'd still like to give them their, their due by having them be able to attempt the one point even if it's a further back field goal like what the NFL did. But I think being able to go for one, two, or three uh, is a brilliant idea. I really do. I think that there should always be a chance to go for three without having to kick a field goal. Um, Ten-point games, you know, I don't know how much this changes it. At ten points, you really can't sit comfortably anyway, but I think it shouldn't be a death sentence really it shouldn't um 
and of course then people are going to be like well so 11 points so what's what's going to stop people from saying oh you should be able to go for four like look you got to draw the line somewhere i get it but i think being able to go for three and a 10 point deficit not mean what it used to in the game of football is really something cool I, that's that's just me Travis, haven't seen you in a long time. Good to see you pop up on the chat there. Um, you guys can continue to share your comments. I'm sure you'll have plenty uh, from my talk with Commissioner Todd Tryon. So I guess without further ado or any more delay, I give you my one-on-one -on -one, uh, who's been in the his new role about as long as I have with the Sioux Falls Storm since he left the Sioux Falls Storm. How crazy is that? But it is my conversation with Commissioner Todd Tryon. Enjoy. All right, Fan Nation, as we continue to celebrate five years of the fan show and we begin our fifth year of IFL coverage, what better way than to welcome the new commissioner of the IFL who about has as much experience in his new job as I do. It is Todd Tryon. How are you doing, Mr. Tryon? Well, I'm doing great, Richard. Appreciate uh, you asking me to be on the show here. Absolutely. It is a very exciting time um, for several different reasons. I remember the announcement was officially made that you were going to sell the team. And then shortly after the announcement was made that you were now the new commissioner and we had you on for an exclusive, we talked a bit about it. it seemed like it had been something that was kind of on your mind for a while, but here we are. We're about 16 days away from kickoff roughly, and we're closer to kickoff than we are to you being the new commissioner. So straight from the horse's mouth, how has your time been as the new IFL commissioner? You know, we, we've had a, a, an outstanding last four or five months uh, leading up into the season. I, I'm really excited for the future of the, of, of the IFL. And, uh, you know, we're dealing with, you know, right now we've got four new teams competing in the 2020 season that were not here in, uh, in, in 2019. And we've got, uh, you know, a couple new ownership groups that are trying to get their feet wet. And so, you know, the last four or five months, it's really been bringing the new teams up to speed, uh, helping some of the existing teams uh, get their house in order and preparing for the future. And so, you know, every day is a new day. That's, that's kind of why, why I love this position at this point. But uh, you know, every day I feel a little more comfortable, too. What is the biggest difference between being an owner and being the commissioner? You know, there's a lot of parallels to it. Uh, there's a lot of similarity, similarities to it. Um, you know, I felt like with, with the storm, you know, I hired great people and, you know, my job was just, you know, not screw things up. I mean, just get out of the way and, <laughs> and let the good people do their job. And, you know, it's a lot like here. There's a lot of great ownership groups that they know what the heck they're doing. And, and I've learned a few things from them. And, um, you know, so I would say that, you know, the, the only difference is, is when I hang the phone up at, at night, um, you know, I, I can I can rest a little, little easy, easier uh, because it, it's uh, there, there's good people that are handling the problems. Yeah, I think um, from what I've observed and talked with, uh, obviously, with the Sioux Falls owners, as I'm now their director of communications and the things that I've learned over the past uh, uh, few months here has really been a lot of positivity. Uh, I know that there's been some growing pains anytime you introduce new teams, returning teams, new ownership groups, new faces, new places. Uh, there can be a lot of different adjustments, and I think that you guys have handled that very well. Uh, I know that back home in Spokane, uh, the fans Fans, the community, uh, very excited to have the return of indoor football. I know that Duke City, happy to be in uh, the IFL as kind of the, the new kids on the block. And then Frisco is assembling their team. And I just talked with Oakland's head coach, and he couldn't be more excited about the opportunity to compete in the IFL. So a lot of positivity, uh, a new look IFL. The new logos have been updated and unveiled. Um, the Eagle will still kind of get its farewell tour uh, on most of the uniforms but uh i mean overall it seems like it's very much the start of a brand new chapter for the ifl it is and we're headed into this new chapter i'm really i'm really impressed with the quality of, of ownership groups and you know when you've got this type of quality the biggest thing it creates is consistency moving forward and you know, i've always said the easiest way to grow a league is to take care of what you got you know when, when you're sitting here trying to replace teams it's tough to grow and, and I'm really excited about the quality of ownership group that uh, is, is, is sitting there right now. 
Yeah, and obviously there will be another team uh, added next year in Columbus, and that's part of the ownership group from Frisco. And then there's other markets obviously very interested in joining the IFL because it's sort of um, – been the cream that has risen to the top uh, for indoor and arena football like play now you mentioned last time we talked that the goal for you guys not just yourself but the league all around the expansion committee and everyone who's involved is to grow this league organically not force anything so how has that been since the last time we spoke like what's your feel going into a new season with four new teams you know, as long as you've got good quality ownership group that you're not having to sit here and micromanage, you know, I, I don't think there's there's really a number on what's too much to grow. Uh, we, we had met winter meetings here late January down there in Frisco, outstanding meetings. First time we've uh, we've ever had a winter meeting and brought the coaches in with the owners. And, and I thought it was it was outstanding with 65 plus people in, in attendance. And, you know, the number one thing that we came to conclusion with is, as we look at expansion is number one is, is the quality of owner is, you know, it, it's the, they, they've got to uh, have all their financials in check and it's got to be pretty clean and they got to have some net worth. You know, it's number one. Number two is geographic. Where do they geographically fit uh, with inside of our footprint? And, and number three, which is really becoming much more important is the quality of the relationship with the arena that, that has become very vital as we move forward. And, and, you know, as everybody's fighting for, for dates, you know, to, to set a team to, to set up a team to succeed, they've got to have a, a, a good relationship with that arena. And so those are the three things that we're looking at. Uh, we're trying to grow by twos, uh, having an odd numbers tough. Uh, as you can see through our scheduling this year, that, that was, that was tough scheduling with, with an odd number and, and moving forward, we're, we're going to try to grow in twos. Yeah, as somebody who obviously is a fan of the league as a whole, and I did highlights last year and always blocked out my weekends to absorb as much indoor football as I could, you know, the weekends where not every team was playing was kind of easier to keep up with than the weekends that had every single team competing. So it's kind of a, you know, it's, you take the good with the bad 13, clearly you cannot have all 13 teams competing on the same weekend but it does kind of give a breather for the fans that want to check out some of these new teams in these new markets now that brings me to the next question though i don't know if you can share anything at this time but do you know what the playoff structure will look like with 13 teams oh yeah the playoff structure is, is eight teams make the playoffs um and it'll, it'll be seated accordingly one will play eight two will play seven three will play six four will play five you know, and after that first round, it'll get reseeded to, to one will play the, you know, the highest left seed uh, type thing. And, uh, you know, the, the top seed will always have home field advantage. Uh, opening round is July 4th weekend. Uh, second round is, is July uh, 11th weekend. Then there's a bye. Championship will be July 25th weekend. Gotcha. Okay. So eight teams, no buy. Uh, that will be a very exciting football, especially all the momentum going into that first week. It was also announced uh, on social media, the Facebook, the Twitter, and the Instagram that you guys have introduced the deuce, which is something from the world of the National Arena League and maybe some others. But I know for me personally, that's where I'm most familiar with it. Uh, the last minute of both halves, the first and the second, the teams can elect to attempt a uh, two-point kick on the ensuing kickoff. When you guys want to implement new stuff, and obviously as a business owner and a commissioner, you know that consistency is key. Like, What's the conversation like to try to introduce new stuff to, to make it beneficial for everybody? Well, the conversation is always about what's best for the fans. I mean, we're, 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 we're in the entertainment business and, and we're trying to entertain the fans and you know how can we add excitement especially at the end of games and you know this was an easy decision when it was brought to us and you know the real question was was it something we we're going to do all game long was it just the last 60 seconds of of the game last 60 seconds of the half you know there was discussion on okay if it hits the upright bar is it live uh you know there's a lot of different discussions that, that went into play but you know it's it's like anything somebody coming up with a with an idea uh a good idea and, and you have discussions about it and what's the positives, what's the negatives. And you know, at the end of it, somebody makes a motion and, and, and it goes to vote. And so I, I expect moving forward that we'll, we'll probably add even, even more rules that uh, will create excitement. 
you know, watching the XFL here the last couple weekends, I mean, they've implemented some rules that you sit here and scratch your head on, you know, how hasn't the big conglomerate NFL thought of those things? Yeah. And, the, uh, oh, go ahead. And, and, and listen, we're, we're not, uh, you know, so stubborn that, we, hey, if, if there's an idea out there that another league is, is using and it's working and it's fun, but we got no problem adopting it. Yeah, I think the XFL, very exciting, very entertaining. I do like that it's not just attempting to be a developmental league. I, I think that the the fact that they're trying to be different where they can with still the same fundamentals of football that you come to know, expect, and love is a very important. But yeah, some of their concepts, uh, I really do hope catch on. I don't know how they haven't uh, caught on before, the kickoff, the uh, the extra points, and things like that. But is there any other rule uh, changes or modifications that fans should be expecting for the 2020 season? You know, nothing that uh, I think a, a, a fan will notice. I would say the one thing... Uh, defensive pass interference in the past that was it was ruled a lot like the NFL to where it was a spot foul uh, to now it's a 15 yard penalty. All, all our rules are, are really based off of NCAA rules because our officials are NCAA officials, and and so you know that was one rule that wasn't real consistent, and so we changed that to the NCAA rule. Um, you know, addressing the fighting side of things, targeting. Um, you know, as as NCAA and NFL clean up. You know what targeting is. I mean, we're obviously following suits. We make those adjustments, uh, but you know, really, you know, you can challenge uh, offensive and defensive pass interference this year. Where last year you couldn't. Um, you know, just just some small tweaks like that that you know most most fans probably didn't even realize was a change. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, I think there's a lot of subtle things. Obviously, the deuce I know will probably have you know, positive and negative feedback like every change does because some people just aren't fans of change. But I think, obviously, I know a lot of kickers. They're going to be very excited at the opportunity to have a bigger role with their team and put up more points uh, than they usually are able to uh, attempt. So that'll be great for, uh, you know, this uh, next season. I look forward to seeing whatever else uh, you guys can come up with. Now, as far as the, uh, the newer markets, we have Oakland now, a big sports market, and then, of course, Frisco, uh, but with Frisco though, it's uh, they're going to have Columbus next year, and that whole family has really taken some he- heavy involvement in the league. How has that been, uh, as far as from a commissioner standpoint, to have the help of the Germain family where they're helping at? You know, they've been outstanding to to, to work with. I'm I'm talking with them on a daily basis. Um, you know, we we also went in agreement with uh, it was a management company called the Team who uh, is, is also backed by the Germains. And, and that agreement was uh, basically, you know, they, they have the rights to uh, sit here and, and, and market our league. And uh, that's been an outstanding relationship that, that we've gotten into. And, and part of that uh, is, is they handle our, our communications position that, that actually just kind of went into effect here about a week ago. Uh, so you'll really see our social media and, and, you know, website, you'll see the, the changes and, and improvements in, in those areas. And so because of that, you know, because of the Frisco market being brand new, uh, getting Columbus ready for 2021, the relationship with, with the marketing and, and business arm and, and the director of communications uh, position, all kind of pointing back to one family. I, I mean, it's, it's a daily, daily conversation that I have with the group. Yeah, been I, great. I think the com uh, the communication has been great uh, already. I've spoken with some of the members of the Germain family uh, for this contact or or that detail or this information. So it's been very good communication. It seems like a well oiled machine right now, but of course, you know, looks can be one thing in the uh, in the you know preseason off season, and then once you actually have to put it out there on the field and, and have a season that could be another, but I, I have no reason to doubt uh, your ability as commissioner. And of course you've surrounded yourself with, with great people. So my last question to you would be, of course, you know, how has being commissioner been? Is it something that you, uh, you would see yourself <laughs> advocating for someone else to pursue? Well, no, I, I think that uh, if you would take a look at, you know, what I've been through and, and kind of my, my bio, um, it's, it's an ideal position for me and I, I've really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking towards the, the, toward the, the future of, of the league, but you know, the biggest thing that, you know, being in this position is you've got to develop relation, great relationships with, with every ownership group and you got to be readily available. And, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm always on call, uh, but it doesn't mean you're always working, you know, but, but, you know, I almost feel like a doctor at, at this point, but, uh, <laughs> 
it, you know, it's, it's been very enjoyable. I mean, these, we've got, I keep saying we've got great ownership groups. And, you know, when, when you look at, a, at the Germains, the reason we're able to attract a, a quality ownership group like that is because of the existing ones we already have and quality attracts quality. And, and you're going to see that as we continue to build is, is the quality ship of, of the ownership groups. And, and that's what it takes to, to build a legit league. And I believe that you guys are building that legitimate league, probably one of the best, if not the best out there right now for indoor football. And uh, you have surrounded yourself with great people, said it time again. And I've said it numerous times on the show as we continue the countdown to kickoff that this is probably going to be one of the most competitive fields we've ever seen. Whoever wins the championship at the end of the season is probably going to be one of the best champions that we have ever seen. And so there you have it, folks, from the commissioner himself. He says that being commissioner is nothing to be afraid afraid of and uh, if you ever have aspirations to be such uh, to to go for it uh, any league any sport if that's what you feel you ultimately aspire to be then by all means give it a go but uh, uh mr tryon i think you have done a fantastic job and i know that it cannot be easy for someone to just jump into a new role like that uh, especially me being director of communications for the storm so i empathize with you and i relate uh probably not quite to the degree of what you have to do on a day-to-day but uh you know i'm i'm right there with you we're on this journey now and it's going to be a a great time so thank you so much for your time well richard i appreciate it appreciate everything you do for for our league um you know you said it better than i did but uh, 2020 is going to be the best year in the history of the indoor football league we'll have adversity we'll have challenges but it's going to be a competitive uh, entertaining league and, and looking forward to it. So thanks for all you do, Richard. Absolutely, Mr. Tryon. Once again, folks, he is the IFL commissioner, Todd Tryon. You take care of yourself, get some rest, and uh, continue the countdown for an upcoming great season. You bet. Take it easy, Richard. Have a good weekend. You too. And one more big thank you for Todd Tryon, a busy man, obviously, but was able to take the time to be on the show the day that we celebrate our official start to five seasons of IFL coverage. And like he said, 2020 will be the best season in IFL history. And I believe that. I really do. You talk to any of the coaches, any of the GMs, the players, I mean, there's a relatively high bar And that's even putting it lightly. There is a really high bar set for the 2020 IFL season. And I think that, um, you know, we're going to nail it. So strap in, hold on tight because 2020 season kicks off in just over two weeks away. So I want to remind all of you to make sure that if you are not able to interact with us live on Facebook, which is normally every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 Eastern for Pacific. And you can do that by liking the Facebook page, facebook.com slash fanshowofficial. But if you can't do that, you can always watch the replay, but you can also subscribe in podcast form, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and of course, Spreaker.com. So make sure that you give us a like and a follow, Instagram and Twitter, the fan show on Instagram and at fanshowofficial on twitter and of course it's not official unless it's fan show official and we are officially out of here fan nation so enjoy your weekend get ready for the fifth year of great fan show ifl coverage we're gonna do it better than ever and i can't do it without you guys so i'm gonna need your help on this one as always but until then enjoy your weekend best of luck to you and yours go niners and of course it's all fun and games until you butt fumble Good night, folks.